I'm in this wonderful garden which belongs to Joe Fairley and Craig Sams. So they're two, a power couple, aren't you? They've started businesses <laughs> on their own and they've got business, a business together which they started. So you're best known, both of you, for starting up um, Green and Blacks. But you're also, you've been head of the Soil Association. You also um, started up restaurants, you're into food. Um, Harmony, and then it was called Whole Earth. Whole Earth, yeah. yes. I married him for his peanut butter. Are you married him for his peanut butter? Oh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> it must be very good. Yes. Um, and then um, your obviously food is an organic. And Joe, you're very impressive too. You've done. You were the f youngest woman magazine editor ever in the UK, and that was on New Look. It was Look Now. Look when Now. I was 23. Sorry. I was a baby. Oh gosh. And then you went on to Honey. Yeah. I remember my sister worked there too many moons ago. Um, and then you've started other businesses and the Beauty Bible where you published books telling what are the best beauty products and then the Perfume Company. Perfume Society, yes. So, so you're both buzzing with ideas which you <laughs> Not start Not much time to sit down. And then you take to fishing but you still have a wonderful garden. We do. Well, that's it. the other reason there's no time to sit down. <laughs> yes. So who is the head gardener here? Oh, <laughs> who is that? Garden? I think I'm, I'm probably the one that chooses all the plants. Right. And you're the one that helps tending them, do you, with your, your carbon gold, your, your biochar, which is one of your companies? I work on the fertility and productivity side <laughs> of the garden, <laughs> and she manages the, uh, particularly the arrangements like this. Ah, yeah. Design. Design. I'm, I'm design. Yeah. I, I think your choice of colour is amazing. I love this sort of muted red. And then your amazing camellias here with the ferns underneath. Now, which fern is this? Because it's I so don't know. It's generous a, it, it, and I know. I, I can't remember the name of it. I can, I can look it up. Um, but it, it's a bit of a thug. I mean, we do have to cut it right back. But it, it goes through the winter. And, you know, it's so valuable to have things that are evergreen. So because we look out at this courtyard all winter long from the living room yes this has to really pay its way mm. you can't have so much deciduous stuff here mm. it's got to have some interest and so camellias are great and the ferns do they die back and the new ones come up we tend to cut them back as the new ones are coming into oh, right. into leaf and then so they you get the gorgeous gorgeous mm. shape oh lovely and did you actually do the layout of the courtyard we had some input from the lovely James Alexander Sinclair. Oh, right. So he um, built the retaining so walls. So he, not personally, but he did, he did help us reconfigure what was a very difficult space with three different levels, it just in this very small courtyard. Yes. And he had the, he had the master plan for the, the terraces because, you know, landscaping is beyond the, the, the scope of a, a, an everyday gardener like us. So, um, uh, and and a lot of the vision for the top of the garden, but you know, you don't always do everything your designer tells you to do. I love the way you. <laughs> Sorry, you, Bunny. But, uh, no, no, no. It's, well, it is a ma it's a, a marriage, isn't it? I yeah. think, and um, you, the way you use the garden is probably different from anyone else. Yeah. And so you want it the way you personally will use it. But what I love is your choice of colour. You've got the beautiful paint colours. So you've got different paint colours, haven't you? You've well, that's charcoal grey. Yes, it's in transition. It's oh, going right. to be the, the aubergine, you, the brinjal. Oh, the brinjal's going everywhere with the white render to bounce more light. And you've got the lovely, is it clapboard, you call that? No, that's... It's not clapboard. That's quarry, uh, tile pan hanging. tiles. Pan tiles, tile hanging. I see, but painted it, white. But painted white and Gosh. neatly arranged so it does look like clapboard but it's wow. actually tiles it's that was done when we moved here right you did that no, it was already done 200 years ago <laughs> and then the pièce de résistance <laughs> the that urn oversized <laughs> urn is just beautiful i always think when you use oversized objects big tables big urns in a small space it it 
creates so much more. It doesn't look sort of nitty gritty tiny. Yeah. It's just bold and beautiful. Yeah. Where did you pick up that little In treasure? a shop down the road in Hastings in the window. And yeah. I saw it and fell in love with it. And I had to run it past Craig and not pretend that it had always been here because I wasn't going to get away with that one. Oh, right. And you do run things past him? Not very often, Bunny. <laughs> I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to rise to that bait. <laughs> and then the most stunning thing, apart from obviously your beautiful array of pots here, which I think are just fantastic, um, are, is obviously I could not guess what that plant was up there, the deciduous plant with no leaves. And when Craig said it's lemon verbena, i.e. Aloysia trifila, I thought, no, I mean that tree there, because mine is this big in a pot, and that must be three metres wide at, and the same at least height. At three metres. And it's just phenomenal, isn't it? And it's the best herb ever. Well, I call it a herb. Now it's a tree. I've been proven wrong. <laughs> the best one ever for a drink with hot water, isn't it? And it is. Honey, and maybe. it's just because we're at the coast and, yeah. and it can stay warm through the winter. Um, it's really really rare to have one that big yeah very rare have you ever seen one of that size no. no no it's really splendid and i also love your balustrade the design of the balustrade i think it's just fun it's different i've never seen there that before it would never pass building regs would it? because it hasn't got the 100 mil gap between the bars but it's oh, quite God nice knows. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing i have to worry about sometimes but i just think it's lovely design it's yeah. so bold yeah and it just seems so different. It's always nice when you see something you've never seen My before. My brother designed that, actually. We were having a party. Yes. And I realised that if we didn't have some kind of railing, then it could end, not, end badly. So, uh, so did he do it like a quick thing off the peg then? then he designed it. And do me a railing. And we had somebody make it, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. That's clever, yeah. I think. Very yeah. clever. Are you going to do that in the aubergine or are you going to keep it green? Uh, no, I like the green. Right. I yeah. like the green. So shall we go up and see the sunnier levels above? Okay. Yeah. That's unusual to see that in a pot. It, it's um, Trachlispermum, isn't yeah. it? Works really well. Yeah. So this, this is a mid-landing, which is lovely between the bottom one and this one, with this beautiful bay tree. And this is your working space, That's I understand. Great. This is where you get your tan. This is where I work on my tan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Again, hundreds of pots. Gosh, they're amazing, aren't they? So, and um, where did you find this urn here? Well, that chuff came from Facebook Marketplace. Quite a lot, actually, in this garden has been sourced from Facebook Marketplace. It's the most amazing resource. It's incredible what people get rid of. And actually, a lot of my terracotta pots came from there. Mm. And also, the, there's, there are two cattle feeding troughs in the bottom garden which are going to go i saw them I, on top they're, of they're actually going mm. to go along uh, here yes and again that was facebook marketplace right my husband's not going to be pleased with you because i'm an ebay <laughs> addict and i i got i'm an amazing old stone pier from an abbey for 45 pounds you know beautiful big it's, ball uh, you know why yeah I, there's so much stuff out there i don't like to use anything new if we can buy yeah. something that's reclaimed for a hundredth of the price often yeah. really is amazing bargains. But that when you, you'll put them on top of that stone plinth there, well, will we're you? We're actually going to put them along that wall as more of a kind of barrier. Yeah. Fewer pots and, and, and a kind of longer run of planting. But I always think when you put something on top of a low wall like that, it makes it look higher and makes it look more dramatic, doesn't yeah. it? Whereas if you put big plants at the bottom, you remove that level difference. And in this garden, it's the levels. Mm. So exciting, aren't they? And the view back from here at the house, it's just a real beauty, isn't it? With a little balcony up there with a the sunlander. That's where Craig does his other hard work on his tan. Work. Oh, so one part of the day there. And I thought you were a successful, very busy businessman running He'll be at all his, sorts of things. He will also be at his desk at 11 o'clock at night. So it kind of Seriously? makes up for it. So you catch the sun and then you go and work when it's uh, the darker. The sun helps me to think. Yeah. And <laughs> helps me to concentrate. It's a, you know, it's, it's a wonderful... Boost those vitamin D levels. It's, yeah. it's much more than vitamin D. There's an energy that comes from the sun that is... My brother wrote a book called Son of God yes. about the power of the sun and why it is actually why people were sun worshippers. You know, oh, right. in, in a real religious sense. And I... I buy into that. I think that... It makes plants grow, Bunny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I used to work, <laughs> and I won't mention the place, in this sort of rather random place of London. 
in London. But when the sun shone, everybody looked happy. It was like it cast a magic spell. Mm. But then on a rainy November day, everyone went round like this. I think it's a mood boost, isn't it? And it, as you say, it makes plants grow and you want to be out there. And then should we go up and explore this amazing mulberry tree, which you obviously didn't plant? No. <laughs> so you obviously grow a lot of your own food here and you've got this amazing, I'm, I'm so jealous, amazing Alatex greenhouse. So the mulberry tree is lovely, isn't it? It's our pride and joy. Mm. It's, uh, it's a brute. I mean, we do have to lop bits off it every year because we do open the garden for charity and um, uh, as part of Hastings Old Town Week where we serve cream tea to 250 people. Gosh. Um, astonishingly. Um, so th you have to get rid of the lower arms, but it, it's quite happy, I think. And do they just sit on it and have their cream cakes They sit things? on the lawn and they sit on the tree and they sit on chairs and they, we set up tables and it's fun. You could never design this into a garden, could you? Because it, it just amorphizes or whatever the word is, and this amazing feature that you it's unbeatable. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, really nice. And it you've is. got lots of tender plants, I can see. You've got the acacia, the albata yeah. there, the florist mimosa. In flower, beautiful evergreen tree, isn't it? Yes. So fast it's lovely. Growing. It looks great from, we can look at that in bed and it sort of sways in the wind and it's beautiful. See, I can grow that in the East Midlands, but I will lose it, say, one in ten years if mm. I put it against the wall. But then it grows so fast. And Melianthus major, which I love, again, I've lost in hard winters but yep. really really good it takes a battering but it comes back mine didn't sadly right. i'm i might like will be my, minus 15 minus 17 sometimes so we are quite chilly yeah, the sea keeps and then us hot. warm here yes yes it's... and i love your raised beds and who is the major gardener do well, we think with it's these just, beds? It's a community <laughs> effort we have a gardener <laughs> who comes in one day a week and we have a gardener who comes in one day a week. Half a day. Yeah. Half, half a day. Half a day, both of them, really. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, similar to me, I have yes, that. And, yes. And, um, I mean, if we, were, if we were both at home together mm. all the time, we'd probably, and not doing anything else, we would mm. do it ourselves. But we need a bit of extra help. And mm. so I'm afraid it is the division of the sexes where Craig is veg and I'm flowers. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that, isn't it? So in, in my house, we don't have that. I do everything, but I'm, actually that suits me very well. I wouldn't trust my... My husband used to be a farmer at one point in his life, and he, if he can't get a combine harvester in there, he's not, not interested. interested. But those look really nice little raised beds there, very nice. And those drawers, are they the compost heaps? The, the compost heaps, yes. Lovely. We had those built. Yeah. Can um, we look at the very top bit and see the very pinnacle yeah. and look back down? You can hear the seagulls, and can you see the sea from there? Not you quite. Can. Yeah, we oh, can. You can. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Let's go and have a look. So this is the very top of your garden, and you can look down and see the sea beyond there, the houses, the hills. It's amazing, isn't it's it? It's very beautiful. And Bless. this, and um, this olive, I reckon six metres. I've just stood back, and I think it's six metres high. Tell me the story of the olive. We brought this here in a little pot, and it was... It was, it's sort of the embodiment of our love, really, isn't it? <laughs> One, you should you say gonna... yes there. Yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> so Q. we had been friends for a long time and uh, Craig would very occasionally sort of put his hand on my knee and I would rebuff him. And we would go and visit a friend of mine, <laughs> a friend of ours, mutual friend in hospital on a Saturday. And one day a chap came along, another friend of hers, who had a nursery in Alexandra Park and he'd just started importing little olive trees. And Craig said, oh, I'd love one of those. And I don't know, he just filed the information away. And then um, my lovely agent came over from America, Kay, and we spent a day with Craig and she was like, do you have a thing going on with that guy? And I'm like, no, he's just a friend. And she said, well, if you don't even consider him, I am never speaking to you again. <laughs> so, you hadn't had a word with her. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> she was guest of honor at our wedding. And, um, and I thought, well, how am I going to kind of make a play? You know, what do I do after all this, this kind of rebuffing him? And I thought, I know, I'll send him an olive tree. 
So that was the olive tree that arrived on his doorstep with a card saying, what do you do when an attractive health, health food salesman comes knocking on your door? Go ahead and bite him in. Go ahead mm. and bite him, him in. in. <laughs> Very good <laughs> So indeed. bad. Yes, so bad. How, how big was it when you gave it to him? It was about, about four, four feet. Foot. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's done so well yeah. there. Yeah. I'm amazed how hardy they are, olives, yeah. but it seems where they come from makes a big difference, doesn't it? I think the Spanish olives seem quite hardy, but... Um, well, they said they're tucky. hardy down to minus 20. But which... in, in Italy, didn't they? They had the very cold weather at minus 17, and it removed a lot of the trees. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that. it does depend on the moisture level, the variety of olive and mm -hmm. everything else. But um, I'm no expert. We don't have to worry expert. about that here, Bunny. No, you, you're fine. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can graze them sometimes, really. And of course, the wall makes it warmer as well. The wall. Yeah. I like radiators as well. So. They change the whole yeah. microclimate, yeah. yes. It's probably six degrees warmer yeah. there than it is there. Yeah. It's amazing the difference it makes, yeah. really. But um, so you were great friends with Paula Yates, and you always think that Paula was flamboyant. She dressed in such amazing way. She had real style and panache yeah. and things. So did you, did you follow in and do, did she suggest things for you and things like that and try and style you? Or? No, God, no, no. We were, to, we were total opposites, but it just, it was sort of opposites attract. And we did like doing the same things. I mean, we loved going to um, fates and garden fates and, and drinking tea and, uh, you know, doing really kind of mund baking cakes and and really domestic pleasures. She had that side of her which nobody have, nobody else really ever knew. No, oh, you uh, don't. When you think of Polly no. Yates, you think of her. She was on... incredibly domestic. Really, uh, yeah. terrible cook and not a gardener at all. But uh, we did. You know, we did those things together, and it was it was great fun. Mm. And tragic, but you you discovered her when she yes. said yes. Yeah. It was. It was. You know, very, one of the saddest things that's ever happened to me. Um, but actually, this garden and this house kind of saved my bacon because we got this house just literally the day before we put an offer in the day before her funeral, uh, or actually on the day of her funeral. And it gave me something, it gave me a project, it gave me something to look forward to. And it also meant for the girls, they had somewhere that they could run free. Her daughters yes. could come and just, you know, literally run wild with with their friends down here that they'd made, and and you know, and they did. So, <laughs> wow, that's lovely. Yeah. And and Paula was going to buy somewhere. Down she would bought somewhere down here. She yes. had bought a house already. Mm. It's it's a you know it's a place where everyone knows what everyone else is doing, and nobody gives a damn. It's very live and let live mm. in the town. That's lovely to have, isn't it? Really nice to have that sort of um, ambiance, really. But no, I can see why you love it. And sitting here, it's, gosh, it's just idyllic, isn't and it? And it's really. only February, Bunny. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing. And come back in July and you can really bask. Yes, and you don't feel like you're in a town. No. But you've got the lovely high street just there. It's phenomenal, really phenomenal. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. I'm deeply envious of your garden and your house. Oh. And your use of colour in the house, I think, is amazing. Thank you. I just I love absolutely colour. stunning. Yeah. And um, it's obviously all down to carbon gold. The garden is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not the house. <laughs> Not the house. <laughs> I did love the story of you making it up in the magic mix. Then. He used to, he used to, his early experiments with carbon gold, with with grinding biochar were in the magic mix, and it just left a kind of film of soot everywhere. <laughs> it's best, very best in the soil, not yeah. on your furniture. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you both very much. That's lovely. Thank you for coming. <laughs>